Now let's now move on to our new regular segment for Mondays, where we turn to a medical expert for a more in-depth diagnosis on the current issues surrounding COVID-19. For this, we have Dr. Alice Tan, internist at Ms. Medi Women's Hospital via Skype. Dr. Tan, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, the South Korean Prime Minister Kim Bukyam stressed the need to take control of the fourth wave of COVID-19 before the upcoming Chuseok holidays. But I think it seems like the spread is neither rising nor falling significantly lately. Now, as a medical expert, do you think it's possible to curb the spread before the holidays? Uh, I think it's going to be very difficult to curb the spread. I think what we need to do is concentrate on vaccination and also make sure that we have the vulnerable groups protected as best as we can. Uh, as you know, in, uh, immunity is thought to wane about six to eight months after the second dose. That means um, the elders who started getting vaccinated uh, in the end of February, they may need a booster shot uh, coming uh, October. And so, yes, we do need to try to get as much control as possible before the Chuseok holiday. Uh, but it's going to be difficult. We have still more than 8,000 cases of unknown epidemiological link. And so um, we do need to expand our testing and uh, keep the measures very tight. Mm -hmm. And with vaccination efforts continuing, with people aged 18 to 49 now receiving inoculations, when do you think will we see an evident fall in the rate of these new infections? You know, it's very interesting. Uh, vaccination is the center of a layered policy, but vaccination is not enough. And case in point, if you look at Florida in the United States, they have a total vaccination rate uh, of people greater than 12 of 52%. That's actually quite high, but they are seeing all time highs of deaths due to COVID-19 and very high hospitalization rate. And so, yes, we do need to get the vaccination rates higher in Korea, but we need to do it in conjunction with masking and physical distancing and all of the other measures that we have had in place. I don't think it's time to even think about uh, relaxing those vaccination measures. Yes, you're saying um, vaccination itself is not really enough to curb the spread of the virus. Um, and since the pandemic broke last year, the South Korean government has been tightening social distancing um, during national holidays. We've heard that the nation celebrates Thanksgiving next month or the Chusa holidays. Authorities are mulling over whether to slightly ease some restrictions. Now, this comes amid new reports that claim the rate of how much people move around is no longer affected by the level of social distancing. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I think it's simply moving around is not the problem, right? If someone travels in their own car with their own family members uh, to a very remote site, they're not really increasing their risk of COVID-19. It's a gathering. It's the mixing. It's uh, being with crowd. That's the problem. And so um, mobility itself is not what we need to con be concerned about. So I think what we can do is uh, teach people how they can spend the holidays, both having fun and enjoying themselves, but staying safe. Uh, there are ways to gather uh, with people who have been fully vaccinated and stay safe. And I think that needs to be the emphasis this season. Mm -hmm. Now, on another note, now the weather gets cooler in South Korea and the flu season is now approaching. How are the two different in terms of symptoms? Will people be able to easily differentiate between the two? I think it's going to be very difficult for a person based on their own symptoms to differentiate before being COVID and influenza. Uh, there's a loss of taste, loss of smell that is more common, of course, in COVID than the flu, but that's not a specific symptom, that's not a sensitive symptom. So the key is to test, test, test. If you have any respiratory illness symptoms, you feel tired, you have sniffles, any cough, backache, any symptom at all, it's best to just test. Uh, and the test will be able to differentiate if it's COVID or influenza. 
Uh, Dr. Tan just said the most important thing is to test, test, and test. Uh, we apologize for the um, technical uh, inconvenience we had in our audio connection. Uh, but we proceed to our next question. Uh, many are considering taking flu shots from September, but as COVID-19 inoculations are ongoing, I must ask, is it safe to take both shots, uh, both COVID-19 shots and flu shots? And since symptoms are similar, are they interchangeable by any chance? Uh, absolutely not interchangeable. So uh, everyone needs to get their COVID vaccine. And then, of course, the high-risk group, everyone needs to get uh, the influenza vaccine. We don't have too much information about the safety and the efficacy of uh, flu and uh, COVID shots taken together. What we have, though, is data from studies from the Novavax company. Uh, they gave their uh, COVID-19 vaccine with the flu vaccine to a subset of their trial three participants. And what they found is the vaccine efficacy uh, did go down slightly in the people who received both shots. People who received both shots had slightly more severe uh, minor side effects, um, but it does seem safe and it does seem like it's still effective. So I think the recommendation will be this flu season, everyone who needs to get their COVID-19 shot to get it, if you need a flu vaccine, to get that too. All right, it's time for us to wrap up our discussion for this week. This was Dr. Alice Tan of Ms. Mady Women's Hospital. Dr. Tan, thank you again for your insights. Thank you.